In fluid dynamics, wind waves, or wind-generated waves, are water surface waves that occur on the free surface of the oceans and other bodies like lakes, rivers, canals, puddles or ponds. They result from the wind blowing over an area of fluid surface. Waves in the oceans can travel thousands of miles before reaching land. Wind waves on Earth range in size from small ripples, to waves over 100 feet 30 meters high. When directly generated and affected by local waters, a wind wave system is called a wind sea. After the wind ceases to blow, wind waves are called swells. More generally, a swell consists of wind-generated waves that are not significantly affected by the local wind at that time. They have been generated elsewhere or some time ago. Wind waves in the ocean are called ocean surface waves. Wind waves have a certain amount of randomness, subsequent waves differ in height, duration, and shape with limited predictability. They can be described as a stochastic process, in combination with the physics governing their generation, growth, propagation, and decay, as well as governing the interdependence between flow quantities such as, the water surface movements, flow velocities and water pressure. The key statistics of wind waves both seas and swells in evolving sea states can be predicted with wind wave models. Although waves are usually considered in the water seas of Earth, the hydrocarbon seas of Titan may also have wind-driven waves. Topic. Formation The great majority of large breakers seen at a beach result from distant winds. Five factors influence the formation of the flow structures in wind waves. Wind speed or strength relative to wave speed. The wind must be moving faster than the wave crest for energy transfer. The uninterrupted distance of open water over which the wind blows without significant change in direction, called the fetch. Width of area affected by fetch at right angle to the distance. Wind duration. The time for which the wind has blown over the water. Water depth all of these factors work together to determine the size of the water waves and the structure of the flow within them. The main dimensions associated with waves are Wave height, vertical distance from trough to crest Wave length, distance from crest to crest in the direction of propagation Wave period, time interval between arrival of consecutive crests at a stationary point Wave propagation direction A fully developed sea has the maximum wave size theoretically possible for a wind of a specific strength, duration, and fetch. Further exposure to that specific wind could only cause a dissipation of energy due to the breaking of wave tops and formation of white caps. Waves in a given area typically have a range of heights. For weather reporting and for scientific analysis of wind wave statistics, their characteristic height over a period of time is usually expressed as significant wave height. This figure represents an average height of the highest one-third of the waves in a given time period usually chosen somewhere in the range from 20 minutes to 12 hours, or in a specific wave or storm system. The significant wave height is also the value a trained observer e.g. from a ship's crew, would estimate from visual observation of a sea state. Given the variability of wave height, the largest individual waves are likely to be somewhat less than twice the reported significant wave height for a particular day or storm. Wave formation on an initially flat water surface by wind is started by a random distribution of normal pressure of turbulent wind flow over the water. This pressure fluctuation produces normal and tangential stresses in the surface water, which generates waves. It is assumed that the water is originally at rest. The water is not viscous. The water is irrotational. There is a random distribution of normal pressure to the water surface from the turbulent wind. Correlations between air and water motions are neglected. The second mechanism involves wind shear forces on the water surface. John W. Miles suggested a surface wave generation mechanism which is initiated by turbulent wind shear flows based on the Inviscid or Sommerfeld equation in 1957. He found the energy transfer from wind to water surface as proportional to the curvature of the velocity profile of the wind at the point where the mean wind speed is equal to the wave speed. 
Since the wind speed profile is logarithmic to the water surface, the curvature has a negative sign at this point. This relation shows the wind flow transferring its kinetic energy to the water surface at their interface. Assumptions Two-dimensional parallel shear flow Incompressible, inviscid water and wind Irrotational water Slope of the displacement of the water surface is small Generally these wave formation mechanisms occur together on the water surface and eventually produce fully developed waves. For example, if we assume a flat sea surface, Beaufort state zero, and a sudden wind flow blows steadily across the sea surface, the physical wave generation process follows the sequence. Turbulent wind forms random pressure fluctuations at the sea surface. Ripples with wavelengths in the order of a few centimeters are generated by the pressure fluctuations. The Phillips mechanism. The winds keep acting on the initially rippled sea surface causing the waves to become larger. As the waves grow, the pressure differences get larger causing the growth rate to increase. Finally the shear instability expedites the wave growth exponentially. The Miles mechanism the interactions between the waves on the surface generate longer waves and the interaction will transfer wave energy from the shorter waves generated by the Miles mechanism to the waves which have slightly lower frequencies than the frequency at the peak wave magnitudes, then finally the waves will be faster than the crosswind speed Pearson and Moskowitz. Topic. Types. Three different types of wind waves develop over time. Capillary waves, or ripples. Seas. Swells ripples appear on smooth water when the wind blows, but will die quickly if the wind stops. The restoring force that allows them to propagate is surface tension. Sea waves are larger scale, often irregular motions that form under sustained winds. These waves tend to last much longer, even after the wind has died, and the restoring force that allows them to propagate is gravity. As waves propagate away from their area of origin, they naturally separate into groups of common direction and wavelength. The sets of waves formed in this manner are known as swells. Individual rogue waves, also called freak waves, monster waves, killer waves, and king waves, much higher than the other waves in the sea state can occur. In the case of the Dropner wave, its 25 meters 82 feet height was 2.2 times the significant wave height. Such waves are distinct from tides, caused by the moon and sun's gravitational pull, tsunamis that are caused by underwater earthquakes or landslides, and waves generated by underwater explosions or the fall of meteorites, all having far longer wavelengths than wind waves. Yet the largest ever recorded wind waves are common, not rogue, waves in extreme sea states. For example, 29.1 meters 95 feet high waves have been recorded on the RRS Discovery in a sea with 18.5 meters 61 feet significant wave height, so the highest wave is only 1.6 times the significant wave height. The biggest recorded by a buoy as of 2011 was 32.3 meters 106 feet high during the 2007 typhoon Krosa near Taiwan. Topic. Spectrum Ocean waves can be classified based on, the disturbing forces that creates them, the extent to which the disturbing forces continues to influence them after formation, the extent to which the restoring forces weakens, or flatten, them, and their wavelength or period. Seismic sea waves have a period of approximately 20 minutes, and speeds of 760 km per hour, 470 miles per hour. Wind waves, deep water waves, have a period of about 20 seconds. The speed of all ocean waves is controlled by gravity, wavelength, and water depth. Most characteristics of ocean waves depend on the relationship between their wavelength and water depth. Wavelength determines the size of the orbits of water molecules within a wave, but water depth determines the shape of the orbits. The paths of water molecules in a wind wave are circular only when the wave is traveling in deep water. A wave cannot feel 
The bottom when it moves through water deeper than half its wavelength because too little wave energy is contained in the small circles below that depth. Waves moving through water deeper than half their wavelength are known as deep water waves. On the other hand, the orbits of water molecules in waves moving through shallow water are flattened by the proximity of the sea surface bottom. Waves in water shallower than 1 20th their original wavelength are known as shallow water waves. Transitional waves travel through water deeper than 1 20th their original wavelength but shallower than half their original wavelength. In general, the longer the wavelength, the faster the wave energy will move through the water. The relationship between the wavelength, period, and velocity of any wave is c equals l t display style c equals l t where c is speed celerity l is wavelength and t is time or period in seconds thus the speed of the wave derives from the functional dependence l t display style l t of the wavelength on the period the dispersion relation the speed of a deep water wave may also be approximated by C equals G L two Pi Display style C equals SQRT GL two Pi where G is the acceleration due to gravity nine point eight meters thirty two feet per second squared. Because G and Pi three point one four are constants, the equation can be reduced to C equals 1.251 L display style C equals 1 251 sqrt L when C is measured in meters per second and L in meters. Note that in both formulas the wave speed is proportional to the square root of the wavelength. The speed of shallow water waves is described by a different equation that may be written as C equals G D equals three point one D display style C equals SQRT G D equals three point one SQRT D where C is speed in meters per second, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and D is the depth of the water in meters. The period of a wave remains unchanged regardless of the depth of water through which it is moving. As deep water waves enter the shallows and feel the bottom, however, their speed is reduced and their crests bunch up, so their wavelength shortens. Topic. Shoaling and refraction As waves travel from deep to shallow water, their shape alters, wave height increases, speed decreases, and length decreases as wave orbits become asymmetrical. This process is called shoaling. Wave refraction is the process that occurs when waves interact with the seabed as the wave crests align themselves as a result of approaching decreasing water depths at an angle to the depth contours. Varying depths along a wave crest cause the crest to travel at different phase speeds, with those parts of the wave in deeper water moving faster than those in shallow water. This process continues until the crests become nearly parallel to the depth contours. Rays, lines normal to wave crests between which a fixed amount of energy flux is contained, converge on local shallows and shoals. Therefore, the wave energy between rays is concentrated as they converge, with a resulting increase in wave height. Because these effects are related to a spatial variation in the phase speed, and because the phase speed also changes with the ambient current, due to the Doppler shift, the same effects of refraction and altering wave height also occur due to current variations. In the case of meeting an adverse current the wave steepens, i.e. its wave height increases while the wave length decreases, similar to the shoaling when the water depth decreases. Topic. Breaking Some waves undergo a phenomenon called breaking. A breaking wave is one whose base can no longer support its top, causing it to collapse. 
A wave breaks when it runs into shallow water, or when two wave systems oppose and combine forces. When the slope, or steepness ratio, of a wave is too great, breaking is inevitable. Individual waves in deep water break when the wave steepness, the ratio of the wave height h to the wavelength lambda, exceeds about 0.17, so for h greater than 0.17 lambda. In shallow water, with the water depth small compared to the wavelength, the individual waves break when their wave height h is larger than 0.8 times the water depth h, that is h greater than 0.8 h. Waves can also break if the wind grows strong enough to blow the crest off the base of the wave. In shallow water the base of the wave is decelerated by drag on the seabed. As a result, the upper parts will propagate at a higher velocity than the base and the leading face of the crest will become steeper and the trailing face flatter. This may be exaggerated to the extent that the leading face forms a barrel profile, with the crest falling forward and down as it extends over the air ahead of the wave. Three main types of breaking waves are identified by surfers or surf lifesavers. Their varying characteristics make them more or less suitable for surfing, and present different dangers. Spilling, or rolling, these are the safest waves on which to surf. They can be found in most areas with relatively flat shorelines. They are the most common type of shore break. The deceleration of the wave base is gradual, and the velocity of the upper parts does not differ much with height. Breaking occurs mainly when the steepness ratio exceeds the stability limit. Plunging, or dumping, these break suddenly and can dump swimmers, pushing them to the bottom with great force. These are the preferred waves for experienced surfers. Strong offshore winds and long wave periods can cause dumpers. They are often found where there is a sudden rise in the seafloor, such as a reef or sandbar. Deceleration of the wave base is sufficient to cause upward acceleration and a significant forward velocity excess of the upper part of the crest. The peak rises and overtakes the forward face, forming a barrel or tube as it collapses. Surging, these may never actually break as they approach the water's edge, as the water below them is very deep. They tend to form on steep shorelines. These waves can knock swimmers over and drag them back into deeper water. When the shoreline is near vertical, waves do not break, but are reflected. Most of the energy is retained in the wave as it returns to seaward. Interference patterns are caused by superposition of the incident and reflected waves, and the superposition may cause localized instability when peaks cross, and these peaks may break due to instability. See also clopotic waves. Topic. Physics of waves Wind waves are mechanical waves that propagate along the interface between water and air, the restoring force is provided by gravity, and so they are often referred to as surface gravity waves. As the wind blows, pressure and friction perturb the equilibrium of the water surface and transfer energy from the air to the water, forming waves. The initial formation of waves by the wind is described in the theory of Phillips from 1957, and the subsequent growth of the small waves has been modeled by Miles, also in 1957. In linear plane waves of one wavelength in deep water, parcels near the surface move not plainly up and down but in circular orbits, forward above and backward below, compared the wave propagation direction. As a result, the surface of the water forms not an exact sine wave, but more a trochoid with the sharper curves upwards, as modeled in trochoidal wave theory. Wind waves are thus a combination of transversal and longitudinal waves. When waves propagate in shallow water, where the depth is less than half the wavelength the particle trajectories are compressed into ellipses, in reality, for finite values of the wave amplitude height, the particle paths do not form closed orbits, rather, after the passage of each crest, particles are displaced slightly from their previous positions, a phenomenon known as Stokes drift, as the depth below the free surface increases, the radius of the circular motion decreases. At a depth equal to half the wavelength lambda, the orbital movement has decayed to less than 5% of its value at the surface. 
The phase speed also called the celerity of a surface gravity wave is, for pure periodic wave motion of small amplitude waves, well approximated by c equals g lambda 2 pi 10 h 2 pi d lambda Display style c equals sqrt frac g lambda 2 pi 10 h left frac 2 pi d lambda right, where c equals phase speed, lambda equals wavelength, d equals water depth, g equals acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's surface. In deep water, where d one 2 lambda display style d g e q f r a c 1 2 lambda so 2 pi d lambda pi display style f r a c 2 pi d lambda g e q pi and the hyperbolic tangent approaches 1 display style 1 the speed c display style c approximates c deep equals g lambda 2 pi display style c underscore text deep equals sqrt frac g lambda 2 pi in si units with c deep display style c underscore text deep in meter per second c deep approximately equals 1.25 lambda display style c underscore text deep approximately 1.25 sqrt lambda when lambda display style lambda is measured in meters. This expression tells us that waves of different wavelengths travel at different speeds. The fastest waves in a storm are the ones with the longest wavelength. As a result, after a storm, the first waves to arrive on the coast are the long wavelength swells. For intermediate and shallow water, the Boussinesq equations are applicable, combining frequency dispersion and nonlinear effects. And in very shallow water, the shallow water equations can be used. If the wavelength is very long compared to the water depth, the phase speed by taking the limit of c when the wavelength approaches infinity can be approximated by c shallow equals lim lambda infinity c equals g D display style c underscore text shallow equals lim underscore lambda right arrow in a t c equals sqrt g d. On the other hand, for very short wavelengths, surface tension plays an important role, and the phase speed of these gravity capillary waves can, in deep water, be approximated by c gravity capillary equals g lambda 2 pi plus 2 pi s rho lambda display style c underscore text gravity capillary equals sqrt frac g lambda 2 pi plus frac 2 pi s rho lambda where S equals surface tension of the air water interface rho display style rho equals density of the water when several wave trains are present as is always the case in nature the waves form groups in deep water the groups travel at a group velocity which is half of the phase speed following a single wave in a group one can see the wave appearing at the back of the group growing and finally disappearing at the front of the group as the water depth d display style d decreases towards the coast this will have an effect wave height changes due to wave shoaling and refraction 
As the wave height increases, the wave may become unstable when the crest of the wave moves faster than the trough. This causes surf, a breaking of the waves. The movement of wind waves can be captured by wave energy devices. The energy density per unit area of regular sinusoidal waves depends on the water density rho display style rho gravity acceleration g display style g and the wave height h display style h which for regular waves is equal to twice the amplitude a display style a e equals 1 8 rho g h 2 equals 1 2 rho g a 2 Display style E equals FRAC one eight row GH carrot two equals FRAC one two row ga carrot two. The velocity of propagation of this energy is the group velocity. Topic Models Surfers are very interested in the wave forecasts. There are many websites that provide predictions of the surf quality for the upcoming days and weeks. Wind wave models are driven by more general weather models that predict the winds and pressures over the oceans, seas and lakes. Wind wave models are also an important part of examining the impact of shore protection and beach nourishment proposals. For many beach areas there is only patchy information about the wave climate, therefore estimating the effect of wind waves is important for managing littoral environments. A wind-generated wave can be predicted based on two parameters, wind speed at 10 meters above the sea level and wind duration, which must blow over long periods of time to be considered fully developed. The significant wave height and peak frequency can then be predicted for a certain fetch length. Topic. Seismic signals Ocean water waves generate land seismic waves that propagate hundreds of kilometers into the land. These seismic signals usually have the period of 6 plus or minus 2 seconds. Such recordings were first reported and understood in about 1900. There are two types of seismic ocean waves. The primary waves are generated in shallow waters by direct water wave land interaction and have the same period as the water waves 10 to 16 seconds. The more powerful secondary waves are generated by the superposition of ocean waves of equal period traveling in opposite directions, thus generating standing gravity waves, with an associated pressure oscillation at half the period, which is not diminishing with depth. The theory for microseism generation by standing waves was provided by Michael Longwet Higgins in 1950, after in 1941 Pierre Bernard suggested this relation with standing waves on the basis of observations. <laughs> See also <laughs>